Welcome my little scientists. Today we'll be looking to solve Sid's problem of why did the icicle melt when it was placed on the table overnight. For our experiment, we'll be looking to show how heat affects the melting and freezing process. First, we're going to set up our apparatus. We're going to put the popsicle in a beaker and we're going to record the initial temperature using a thermometer. As you can see, the temperature of the icicle is about 0 degrees Celsius. Next, we're going to set up our apparatus for heating. We're going to place a wire gauze on a tripod stand over a Bunsen burner and we're going to use a lighter to light the Bunsen burner. Then we're going to monitor the temperature of the beaker throughout until all the liquid has melted. Alright, so immediately you can observe that as soon as the heat from the Bunsen burner is added to the beaker, the solid popsicle starts melting into a liquid. Fun fact, while doing this experiment, the temperature kept rising and rising until it was almost 100 degrees Celsius. So we decided to show you that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Take a look. The boiling point of a substance is when that substance change from its liquid state into its gaseous state. So right now, you're seeing the liquid popsicle boiling. That means the liquid popsicle is turning into popsicle gas. A nice popsicle is enjoyed as a refreshing icy treat by many young kids. Did you know that as a scientist, when your popsicle melts, you can turn it back into a liquid? Yes, it is easy to turn your liquid popsicle back into its solid state. All you have to do is remove the heat energy from the liquid. The best place to do this, like Sid, is to place your liquid in our fridge. The fridge will work by lowering the temperature and removing the heat from the liquid. A nice solid popsicle will reform. Let's do this experiment. Let's to start this part of the experiment we're going to use a beaker to collect the liquid popsicle. Next we will use a measuring cylinder to measure out 50 ml of the liquid popsicle. Then we will take an ice tray and pour 50 ml of the liquid popsicle in it. Next, we will use a thermometer to measure the temperature of the liquid popsicle at the start of our experiment. Then, we are going to place the ice tray in a fridge. We will immediately start a stopwatch to start recording the time. Then, after one hour, 
we will take the ice tray out of the fridge. Finally, we're going to use a thermometer to measure the popsicle formed. To measure the temperature of the popsicle formed. 